dislocation. When we say shoulder dislocation, we mean a glenohumeral joint dislocation. A glenohumeral joint is that joint between the head of the humerus and the glenoid cavity of the scapula. There are many underlying risk factors of a glenohumeral joint dislocation. The first of them is shallow glenoid cavity. A glenoid cavity is that cavity in the scapula that receives the head of the humerus. Shallow glenoid cavity will lead to shoulder joint dislocation in a lot of cases. Another risk factor of shoulder joint dislocation is laxity of the ligaments that surround and fixate this joint. There are many ligaments that surround and fixate the humeroglenoid joint. Coracohumeral ligament is one of them. Transverse humeral ligament is the second one. Laxity of these ligaments will lead in a lot of cases to shoulder joint dislocation. The third underlying risk factor is extraordinary motion around the shoulder joint. Shoulder joint has a wide range of movement around it. Extraordinary, extraordinary motion will cause stress on the upper limb and shoulder joint dislocation in many cases. Shoulder dislocation classification. Shoulder dislocation was classified into three groups, anterior dislocation, posterior dislocation, and inferior dislocation. In this graph, we can see the normal anatomy of the shoulder joint. The humerus head rests in the glenoid cavity of the scapula. In anterior joint dislocation, the humerus head is in anterior relationship to the glenoid cavity. In posterior dislocation, the humerus head is in, an, in, a post, in posterior relationship to the glenoid cavity. Let's start with anterior dislocation. Anterior dislocation, as we can see here, is at an anterior displacement of the humerus in relation to the glenoid cavity, as we mentioned. The most important the trauma that may cause shoulder anterior shoulder joint dislocation is falling down on outstretched outstretched backward hand as we can see in this graph and in this graph outstretched backward hand in medical term is extended abducted externally rotated hand extended abducted externally rotated hand extended abducted and externally rotated hand by logic falling down on this hand will push the humerus anteriorly pushing the humerus anteriorly will lead in some cases to anterior displacement or dislocation of the shoulder joint the symptoms that patients come with in shoulder joint dislocation is pain sudden severe pain another symptom is a flattened a flattened arm as we can see here the link between the arm and shoulder is rounded here the link is flattened the cause of this is atrophied deltoid muscle shoulder joint dislocation leads to axillary nerve injury in a lot of cases axillary nerve supply the deltoid muscle loss of function in axillary nerve will lead to atrophied deltoid muscle atrophied deltoid muscle will lead to a flattened flattened um. another symptom is a humerus fracture it is not symptom it is more finding that Patients with shoulder joint dislocation will face, in a lot of cases, difficulties in abduct their hands, again because of axillary nerve injury. 
deltoid muscle is responsible for adducting the, har the arm above 15 degrees. Okay. To investigate shoulder joint dislocation, we have to do X-ray. X-ray will show us head of a humerus below and below and medial to the glenoid socket. This is a glenoid socket and this is the head of humerus. It is below and medial to it. So, how can we treat the patient with shoulder joint dislocation? First of all, we have to examine the neurovascular of the patient. Neurovascular examination is a must before and after treatment of shoulder joint dislocation. We are talking about anterior dislocation now. How to examine neurovascular structures? Deltoid muscle is to be affected with shoulder joint dislocation because the axilla nerve injury. We have to ask the patient to abduct his, his arm. If he fails to abduct his arm, above 15 degrees then axillary nerve is involved in the shoulder joint dislocation injuries after that we have to try to reduct the joint in place there are many maneuvers to, redu to reduce the joint in place the first one of them is the hip Hippocrat maneuver in Hippocrat maneuver the doctor put, puts his heel on the axilla of the patient and slightly abduct the arm of the patient and try to tract the arm of the patient and then reduce the location in place another maneuver is Kuchar maneuver Kuchar maneuver has four steps the first of them is to approximate the arm to the body after that the elbow should be flexed 90 degrees after that the elbow will be laterally rotated to 70 degree lateral rotation after that the elbow will be pushed forward and the arm will be internally rotated or medially rotated okay four steps first one as we can see the arm is abducted near the body the second one the elbow is flexed to 90 degree the third one the arm the forearm is laterally rotated laterally rotated until we reach 70 degree approximately step we have to push the elbow anteriorly and to medially rotate the forearm the third maneuver of reduction of shoulder joint dislocation is Stimson Stimson reduction maneuver could be done could be done without general anesthesia Kuchar and Hippocrat we have to do anesthesia in Stimson uh, 5 to 10 kilogram weight will be held in the rest of the patient the patient will be in a prone position and hanging over his hand after 15 to 20 minutes the shoulder dislocation is expected to back in a place what to be done after reduction of the shoulder joint dislocation after reduction we have again to do a neurovascular examination so don't forget to do a neurological examination before and after reduction this is the most important thing to remember because of medical legal issues and because of the benefit of the patient because you may injure the axilla nerve by your reduction or it may be injured by the trauma itself 
so you have to differentiate that it this by previous and pro neuro examination of uh, of the axillary nerve okay so what we have to do sling is to be put in after that for one or two weeks exercises is important but we have to avoid abduction and lateral rotation of the hand we have to avoid abduction and lateral rotation of the hand so what is the treatment again reduction no not reduction before reduction we have to do a neuro examination reduction and sling for one to two weeks exercise but don't do abduction and lateral rotation see you in the next video